Welcome back everyone. In the last video, I showed you how to set up your very own Bitcoin node with a copy of the entire Bitcoin blockchain running on your very own hard drive. If you set that node up, your little node has been validating all the transactions and all the blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain, essentially acting like your own Bitcoin bank. That foundation we built is crucial because today we're gonna build another layer right on top of it. And for those of you who didn't catch that video, I'll leave a link in the description below or check it out right here. You can think of today's video as upgrading your Bitcoin bank with actual banking services. We're going to be diving into the wallet software that comes with your Bitcoin node. And as such, this is a Bitcoin only video. Today, you're gonna to learn how to store and manage your Bitcoin using your very own node. And this is very different than regular wallets. It's more powerful and way more private. And by the end of this video, you'll be using Bitcoin the way it was designed to be used. If that sounds good, let's dive in. So why would you wanna use your nodes wallet? Well, there's two major categories of advantages, the direct connection advantages and the security advantages. Using the wallet function of your Bitcoin node allows you to connect directly to your very own node, of course. That eliminates any middleman in between. Every transaction you make is verified by your own hardware, not some company's servers. And when you check your balance, you're getting data directly from the blockchain. After all, you have a copy sitting on your desk and there's no risk of downtime because you have control of everything and no waiting for external services to confirm your transactions. You ever wonder why it takes so long to get your Bitcoin off of an exchange? That transaction has to be approved by the exchange before it gets sent out for confirmation. And sometimes that approval can take hours, days, or even weeks in some cases. And sometimes you don't even get approved. Using the wallet in the Bitcoin node eliminates any trust requirements. You're verifying everything yourself, just like we discussed in the last video. And your wallet works even if the popular Bitcoin services are down. Remember that entire copy of the blockchain that took days to download? Well, you're using that to verify your transactions. No one can feed you fake transaction data your node would catch any attempts to do that. Your wallet addresses also never touch any external services. Perfect privacy from day one. Even your transaction lookups stay on your very own computer. And if you're using the Tor services, which I'm not gonna discuss in this video, that's more advanced level stuff, all wallet activity is automatically anonymized. Uh? Anonymized, anonymized. And you're protected from any fake Bitcoin nodes because your wallet only communicates with your trusted node. And network attacks can't affect your wallet because you're not relying on any external services. Now that you're convinced using the Bitcoin Core wallet function is a good idea, let's take a look at the wallet software. The Bitcoin Core wallet is a feature that's built into the Bitcoin Core software that manages your very own node. Now your node needs to be fully synced for your wallet to function properly, so make sure you're up to the latest block in terms of syncing your node. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Bitcoin Core wallet software and create our very first wallet. Okay, here we are at the Bitcoin Core home pages, so to speak. This window here is the node window and the window behind it is the wallet window. So let's, this node window might seem familiar. Hopefully it will. I'm gonna clear out this window here. This is the information window and console network traffic on our node as it communicates with other nodes and the peers that are connected to our node right now. We have a bunch of inbound and 10 outbound nodes or 10 outbound connections. All right, let's go ahead and look at the wallet window. You can see up here, this is the wallet selector. This is the Bitcoin Core wallet that comes standard with the application. No available Bitcoin, no pending Bitcoin, no total Bitcoin. And then there are some other tabs up here. Let's go ahead and create our first wallet. It's so easy. You just go up to the file menu and the first option that you can select is create wallet. It's off the screen, sorry about that. You just select create wallet and then this little window pops up. It says you're one step away from creating your new wallet. Please, please provide a name. Let's call it node wallet. We can encrypt the wallet, which is essentially using a passphrase to encrypt the wallet. It uses AES-256 encryption which is the 
gold standard military grade bank grade encryption and we don't want to disable private keys that would be a watch only wallet and we don't want to make it a blank wallet because it doesn't have any functionality in it it's hard to explain but don't check that box so we want to encrypt the wallet we would select this i'm not going to do this because i'm just going to create a wallet for demo purposes and then press create and that's it and you'll notice up here now we have selected node wallet and no Bitcoin available, no Bitcoin total, and no transactions. If you come up in this area, you can see in the upper left, there's other tabs. They don't look like tabs so much, but there's a send tab, a receive tab, and a transactions tab. To get Bitcoin in your wallet, you go to the receive tab. Uh, you can add a label and say from Coinbase or something. And then you can set an amount if you wish, but you can just leave it blank. Bitcoin is what you want to denote the uh, number in. What type of address you'd like to produce, Taproot, Native Segwit. I don't use the other two. The fees are very high. Most of, For the most part, I use Taproot, which is the lowest fees. And then I'm going to create a new receiving address. And there it is. And you can copy the address or save the image and scan it with a mobile device or scan it directly if you want, or you can copy it and paste it into the exchange application and send Bitcoin to the wallet. All right. I do have a wallet that I've already made a transaction to, and that is my BTC wallet right here. And if we go to overview, we can see that there is some Bitcoin in there. The total is 0 0.00037331 Bitcoin on October 18th from the Stripe app. I made a little note and we can send that Bitcoin out, which we'll do later, hopefully. And let's look at the transaction. This is the transaction that took place on October 18th. And I'm not sure what this shows. Oh, this is the address and some of the information uh, of the transaction. And then if we look at our list of transactions, that should show up here. It is right here. And if I double click that, I get a lot more information about that particular transaction, the, tra the transaction ID to from from the strike app etc and how many confirmations have been accomplished etc so let's go back to the overview i forgot to mention when you create a wallet in this software it's automatically connected to your node there's no configuration or any setup needed it's already connected to your node so you're in business as soon as you create the wallet also after you create the wallet you need to make sure you back it up i don't know if you noticed but when I created that wallet, it never gave me a seed phrase. So what it does is it creates a private key and it stores that on a file, a DAT file. So what you need to do is back that file up. And what you do is, let's say we go select node wallet, go up to the menu at the top of the screen, go to backup wallet, pretty simple. And it'll ask you where you want to save it. I'm going to save it in the documents folder as node wallet backup. I'm going to save it in the documents folder. And this is the backup file, node wallet backup.dat, opened with text editor on my Mac. And it looks like a lot of gobbledygook, but that is the backup. You need to save this file. A lot of people lose this, lost this file when they were using Bitcoin in the 2010 to 2015, 16, 17 era, this was really the only way to save your Bitcoin was to save a file. And they left it on their hard drive. There's a famous case of a guy who left uh, a file on his hard drive and it went to the landfill and he lost thousands of Bitcoin worth tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm, I can't remember what, it, what the amount was, but it's really significant. So don't lose this file because your thousands of Bitcoin that you're going to accumulate could be lost if you lose this file. And if your computer shuts down or you can't restart, you can always restore the wallet using this file on another device. Also, it's really important to encrypt that file or store it on an encrypted drive that nobody can get into. If somebody comes across that file and it's unencrypted, they'll just restore it to this wallet and done. They've got all your Bitcoin. So <laughs> encrypt that file or store it on an encrypted device or maybe even both. Now, I mentioned the encryption function of the wallet a minute ago, and it's very important to use that function. So check that box and set a password. If you create a wallet without do using that encryption function, 
you can always do it afterwards, and I'll show you how to do that. You go up to the menu at the top of the page again. Under Settings, it says Encrypt Wallet. Again, not very complicated. And this, then this window pops up. Enter the new passphrase for the wallet. Please use a passphrase of 10 or more random characters or 8 or more words. Wow, that's an intense passphrase. I like to use a site called useapassphrase.com, and that will help you come up with a passphrase uh, up to 12 words, actually. And then you paste it in here and then press OK. The wallet becomes encrypted. The backup file is encrypted and everything is safe. Don't lose the backup file. Don't lose the passphrase. Super powerful super important. Also, once in a while, you should try to restore your wallet to another device or another wallet using another name on this device just to make sure your backup is in good shape. Really important. I can't stress enough how important it is to back up your wallet. Now that you know your way around the interface a little bit, let's go ahead and send the Bitcoin that's in the wallet that I created earlier out of the wallet to another wallet and see how that functionality works. Let's go back to the wallet. All right, here we are at BTC wallet. This is the balance in the wallet at the moment. And we can see there's the transaction list. We can receive more if we want. And this is where we go to send out to the send tab. Makes sense. We want to send the entire balance. So we're going to use all of the available balance and subtract fee from that amount, which makes sense because we don't have any extra and we're going to get an address and I'll be right back and get an address that we're going to send this to. Okay. I have an address. I'm going to paste it into the pay to area here. There we go. Okay. That's the address label to liquid. Actually, I'm going to send this to the liquid network through the side swap application. And this address was generated for me using the side swap application in order to peg this into the liquid network and I really like the Liquid Network. If you don't know what the Liquid Network is, I have a video on that topic. You can check it out. I'll put a link in the description as well. All right, so let's review. We've got two Liquid. We've got the address here. We've got the full amount. The fee is going to be removed. And how much fee do we want to use? This is kind of neat because we can adjust the fee. We're gonna choose. And right now, confirmation time target is six blocks. The recommended fee is 20,000 sats. Let's go head over to Shocker, mempool.space, and see what's going on and see why the fees are so high. Here we are at mempool.space. Right now, they're at 20 sats per V-byte. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not terrible. It's $1.96, but obviously, I'd like to see it much lower. But every time I do a video, the fees spike, although this seems like they've been high for a while. Not sure what's going on. The transaction backup is not terrible. Quarter of a million unconfirmed transactions, that's not unusual. Usually hovers around 200 to 225,000, uh, that is, unconfirmed transactions. Most of them sit all the way down here in this block, 222,000 transactions waiting to be confirmed because their fees are too low. All right, well, I don't know if there's something going on with ruins or NFTs or something else that's driving the fees up, but that is a lot of transactions, a lot of little ones, so I'm suspect. I'm gonna send the transaction anyway. Let's go back to the Bitcoin Core wallet. Okay, I'm gonna send this. I don't know exactly how much that is, but we'll find out. And enable replace by fee. This allows us to adjust the fee after we've sent it. If the fees spike even higher, we can add more Bitcoin and adjust the fee. But of course, I don't have any more Bitcoin to add in this wallet. So that might be a challenge. We can send a cut or we can set a custom amount of fee. This is a thousand, which it's not going to be low enough to get confirmed anytime soon. I'm going to use the recommended amount. All right, let's go ahead and send. And I have to enter the passphrase that I set up on this wallet. I'm going to go copy that and I'll be right back. Okay, here's the passphrase. I'm going to press OK and hopefully the transaction will be sent. Uh-oh, do you want to create this transaction? Let's see. Yes, wallet to liquid, transaction fee. Everything looks good. Okay, now I can send. For some reason this isn't blue. It sort of threw me off, but yeah, we can send it. Let's do it. And there we go. So right now... The transaction status is 
zero slash unconfirmed, which means it's in the mempool. The mempool is on the hard drive of the node. Every node has a copy of the mempool. So it, it's right now this transaction is sitting on my node waiting for a miner to pick it out and confirm the transaction. And then the nodes double confirm the transaction. And now we're just going to have to wait. I'm going to copy this transaction ID and go to mempool.space and paste it in there to see exactly where it is. Okay, here we are at mempool.space. I pasted that transaction ID in and looks like we're in the first block, which is fantastic. The fee is 20 sats per vbyte. Hopefully we'll get confirmed in the very first block. Maybe we'll get pushed to the second block because we are in the little bit left of center here. Sometimes this creeps over to the edge and then jumps to the next block. Anyway, good stuff. It selected a really good fee for the moment. Back to the wallet. I'll come back after a few minutes and see if anything has changed on this transaction list. The transaction has been confirmed the very first time. That is good stuff. Let's go back to the wallet and check it out. Okay. Here we are back at the wallet. Oh, this icon has changed now, and that's a little clock. What happens on, at least on the Sparrow wallet, is that this clock fills in as the transactions proceed, up to six transactions or six confirmations, and then the transaction is final on the blockchain. Now it's not reversible at this point, and we can't do anything about it, but it's not final until six confirmations. And let's see what else we can do in here. Transaction ID, copy full transaction details. Very cool. Let's show the transaction details again. Nothing too exciting in here. And that is it. The wallet is empty at this point. You can see the balance is zero. I think this wallet is really neat for Bitcoin enthusiasts, of course. It is ridiculously private. The transactions are sent to your node, then your node syncs with other nodes on the blockchain not tagging you to that particular transaction. Now, Bitcoin transactions can be tracked around on the blockchain. That's why I've blurred them out on this video and all my other videos. But it's really nice to know that you have a copy of the entire blockchain that you can use to verify your transactions rather than sending them to a third party service or having someone or some other entity needing to approve your transaction before it can be sent to the blockchain. That drives me crazy. So I think this is a really neat wallet. You do have to take care of the security of that backup file. Super important. It needs to be encrypted, stored in, on an encrypted drive, or encrypted and stored online in multiple copies. You need to follow what's called the 321 backup rule. You need three copies of the backup file or, or the seed phrase or whatever you're backing up on two different kinds of media, and at least one of them needs to be off-site, that is, away from where you are. You could take it to work, you could put it in the trunk of your car, you could put it in the backyard, give it to a friend, whatever you need to do. But it needs to be away. So 321 backup system. That is the best way to secure this wallet and the backup file. There's a lot more functionality to this wallet, particularly using the console. There's a million and a half commands that you can enter into this little window down here that I'm not going to get into. It, we could go down a deep rabbit hole and this video would be 45 minutes long. It's long enough. All right. That's how you use the wallet. It is secure. It is private and it is awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave some comments down below on your experience with the Bitcoin Core wallet and whether you're comfortable using it or not. I think it's a really neat wallet. Thanks again for watching. Hit the subscribe and the thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video.